All right, so here we are back in the lab. And for this little fun, we'll use host Megatron here. So first we go to configuration to storage adapters and we need to add iSCSI. So we'll do add software iSCSI and hit okay. So give that a second and it will add the iSCSI uh, software initiator. So next thing we need to do is configure some networking. While it's doing that, we'll go do this. Now, you don't have to do this unless you want to do multipathing. It'll actually use your uh, a regular VM kernel interface, but it's going to be shared and, well, I guess it doesn't have to be shared if you create a VM kernel on the iSCSI network and just use it. It'll work kind of like what we used to do in the past. But if you want to do multipathing, there's a couple of things you need to do. So let's go to networking. And what you need to do, there's two ways to do this, and I'll show it to you. So let me add, and we're going to do a VM kernel interface. We're going to create a new switch. I'll do it with both NICs. Uh, I, two and three are free and available. That's why I'm choosing them. And then if I want to give it uh, a VM kernel interface, we'll say, you know, VM kernel uh, iSCSI 1. VLAN in my lab is 5. Uh, da, da. And type is IP. Next. And give it an IP address. So I'm actually just going to tell it to DHCP. I know you should never do this, but I didn't pull two IPs, but I'll just grab them since this is temporary and say next. So it's going to go ahead and create this, and it's going to create it with two NICs. So then I want to come back in here, and I want to add another one, another VM kernel interface. Call it VM kernel iSCSI 2, 5, management. Actually, no, I didn't do that. Not management, IP, uh, and automatically. I know, I know. All right, so now here's the gotcha. The gotcha is, is that you can't let both of these guys use the same NICs. So you override switch failover, and for iSCSI 1, I'm going to tell him to use NIC 2, and the other one is uh, actually unused. And for iSCSI 2, I'm going to do the opposite of that. So I'm going to leave 3 and move him to unused. And we'll say okay. The idea being is you're basically mapping VM kernel interfaces one to one to physical NICs. So let's go see if this worked. Back to storage adapters. iSCSI is now installed. Let's do a properties. Uh, here's your IQN. I said you'll need to know how to get. Hopefully you know how, but here it is. If you have to enable CHAP authentication, you do that here. So if they give you a login information, you that's where you would configure that. Advanced is some simple advanced uh, configuration options. I don't think you'll see those. Configure is just, you know, if you want to change your IQN or anything like that, or you just want to temporarily disable iSCSI, you do that there. Now let's go to network configuration. So right now the VM kernel port bindings are blank. So let's click Add. And it shows us our two VM kernels. So real quick, if you come in here and you click Add and it's all blank and doesn't show you anything, it thinks that you've configured something wrong. Normally that means you have one VM kernel interface with say two NICs as active or something like that. So it's not going to show that. It's got to be a one-to-one -one mapping. So it says, hey, you can use these. VM kernel 1, VM K2, gives you some information. Yay, we'll say OK. Add VM K2. OK. And now it's going to use both of those. And next, you just go do your discovery like you normally would in my lab. That is my iSCSI target. And we'll say close. And it's going to say, do we want me to rescan? And I'm going to say absolutely. And then it's going to come up and say, I see four targets, three devices, a total of 12 paths. And that is correct. So it's using all my paths and doing everything as it should. So let's do properties again network configuration, and we'll see my active paths there. So it's nice and happy, and port group policy is compliant, so it's doing the correct thing with the one-to-one -one mappings. And really, that's it. Um, it used to have to do this via the CLI, create VM kernels, map them over to the right Oscars target, and it was just kind of a pain. Now it's, it's easy. The other way to do this, just so you know, is to actually create two vSwitches. Uh, the first vSwitch, like vSwitch 1, with one VM kernel interface and one NIC, and then a second vSwitch with the second VM kernel interface and the second NIC. In the end, you're doing the same thing, 
Uh, it just depends how you want to manage it. I personally prefer the latter. I prefer the two separate V switches because I can walk or walk in here. I can go into the configuration to networking and it's laid out there for me. Uh, this is a little bit I have to go in and go, well, did they did they do this right? I have to go look at my network adapters. I have to scroll down. I have to go uh, active, VMDIC3, unused. Okay, yeah, they did that right. So uh, to me, it's easier to look at, but it doesn't matter as long as you set it so it's a one-to-one -one mapping. And again, once you've done that, go to storage adapters, go to properties, go to network configuration, assign these, and make sure everything is green and happy. But that's it. Uh, the only other things I can think of for the exam for iSCSI, I mean, I just showed you how to install it, which you should probably already know. Uh, CHAP authentication is easy. I showed you that. Uh, if you get that, you just punch in your logins there. And really, that's all there is to it.